So a little life update for those of you that like to join this journey with me. I have been in a back brace for the past like four days because I hurt my back while I was checking in my kitchen that I purchased from Ikea. So the flat pack jungle arrived at my house and I had like 24 hours to check it all in and make sure that everything was accounted for. And while I was moving these giant boxes of whatever, tweak my back, I've been in a back brace and back brace is just a, you know, more medical term for the word corset. And so I have the stays on that, that have been just grinding into my, like that part where you're hit your, th and so I have permanent indents right now and I'm in a load of pain, but that means I'm one step closer to getting my kitchen and that's super exciting. That actually has nothing whatsoever to do with, you know, today, but life update. Yes, I'm going to tell you about today's video and all the things in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 118 of 365 days of soap. Year two. Year two. And today we are completely finishing and putting in the can the Animal Crossing theme that we've been working on, and we are doing it bath bomb style. And not just any kind of bath bomb style, we are doing fortune cookie bath bombs with a cool new mold. The, I will leave the information for the person that I got this mold from, but I want to say it's called like Geek Splatter on Etsy. And the only reason I remembered that is because I'm a geek and the store definitely had some sort of geek in it. Anyway, fortune cookie, 3D fortune cookie bath bombs. And I've never worked with these molds before, so I'm very interested to play with them and see what happens. Yeah, I wanted to see if it was possible to like get a fortune cookie inside of them or how wet of a bath bomb mixture I'm going to need to do any of this, how well they hold up, do they firm up, are they, all of the things. And so we're going to do that today for the end of Animal Crossing because fortune cookies are a thing in the pocket version. And if you know, you know. But we're gonna we're gonna go to the video now. Okay, there is like so much weirdness going on with this, but yeah, check out the new mold. Oh my god. So I don't know that I've ever actually really played with any of these compression molds. Look what I'm gonna try to put in the fortune cookies. That's so this is waterproof paper. And I made a whole bunch of random fortunes with numbers to put inside the fortune cookie bath bombs because these are fortune cookie bath bombs. The reason why they're fortune cookie bath bombs is because they're animal crossing bath bombs. And in the pocket camp edition on you know my phone, uh, there are fortune cookies that you get and they have like furniture and stuff in them. And that's amazing. And so I picked this up and wanted to do the thing. And I also wanted this inspired after like a cool galaxy type bomb or uh, fortune cookie that I get in the game. And so that's why the color is weird. When it blooms out, the hope is it all goes purple, but honestly, I'm hating this color. So I'm likely gonna have to do something to the bombs after they're all dry to make them a bit prettier because this is ugly. But yeah, no, I have never played with any of these types of molds before with the little shapey shape things, whatever. 
And so I thought, why not? I will pick these up and, you know, try one. And so this is literally me just testing it out. Now, what I did was kind of pack the the bottom part down pretty firmly, put the one, in, put the little fortune in the middle, which because it's waterproof paper, it's not very flexible, right? And so I'm worried that it's going to cause a problem in the molding of the bombs just in general. And figuring out the right amount of bath bomb powder to go into these molds also kind of complicated. And so we're trying, we're working with all kinds of things today. It's just a test day just across the board, really. And I'm pretty sure it's, see now I put way too much in there. If the bomb cannot close, it's going to be, you know, problematic. So again, test day. How much bath bomb powder do I need for these little mold thingies? And are they worth it with these new mold shape compression things? I mean, they're not exactly new. They've been around for a while. I just have never messed with them. So new to me. Now, if you're interested in these molds, I actually got some really cool ones from this company on Etsy called Geek Splatter. So geek like me, like I'm a geek, I'm a nerd, right? And splatter like paint splatter that. All right. So instead of compressing any of it, just put a whole bunch into the top of the mold there and then press it down and see if that works better. So less powder in that overall for sure. And still worried about the fortune inside and whether or not, see, and I still have too much powder in there. There's still too much. Now, if you're interested in the actual recipe for this, you can go back and watch any of my bath bomb videos wherein I gave you my recipe and I used the exact same recipe for this. So I did not make my bath bomb powder overly moist for this. And I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but as you can see, I'm already struggling with molding the bombs and I'm thinking it has something to do with that fortune cookie. So first things first, or that fortune rather. So first things first, let's just try to get a successful bomb out of this before trying to put something inside. Now really what I just did there is what I do with really my spherical molds. I just put some bath bomb powder in and did not compact either side. So that's what I went with for that. And for those of you always commenting on my arms and what my workout routine is, I make soap. I've seen a big bicep push a couple times in all of this. This is what I do. And so there's that. Now this seems a little bit too fragile. So I need more bath bomb powder in there. Yeah. So just putting it in and not compressing anything just filling it up with a nice mound there and not compressing anything is not going to be the way to go. So let's try it with the actual compression this time and see if that works, you know, better really. And put basically the same amount on the top, but don't compress it and use the other side for that. There you go. See, you're getting your arm workout right there. That's how you get guns. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not kidding. I, yes. It's a weird aside, I know, but so many people ask about it and I always feel weird actually even commenting on it and, you know, people have wanted me to like do a workout routine and stuff and a lot of it's just muscle memory with my body now. I used to be in the industry and in the fitness industry, not in the other, although that's cool too. And I just, oh, there we go. There we go. I just kind of retained all of that and I make a lot of soap, so that's, that's my workout. But that actually seemed to work out pretty well, didn't it? So compress the bottom and then don't compress the top. Fill it up to basically the top of the mold and then put the other little bit in for to plunge it all together and use that for the compression. And that worked out well. I can get behind that. That is a beautiful little fortune cookie. Assuming it holds up as it's going to sit there on my counter while I make more and bang these things down more. 
and all the things. Because bath bombs, as we know, are they're kind of fragile right when you make them. So it could go either way, really. I really am still wanting to get these fortunes inside, though, because I made them. I feel like I want to use them. And it's kind of a bummer that they're not working so far. Honestly, just from the stiffness of the paper, though, I just don't see this working. I don't see that this would really work really well, even in a spherical mold. So definitely maybe a different type of paper. Yeah, see, it's... There's not enough bend to that. So if you put a different type of paper in it, really, though, you're still going to be... Well, you're running into the problem of it dissolving in the water before it... And before you can take it out. So I don't really know. I'm, I'm kind of bummed about that because I super did want the fortunes in there. But, you know, whatever. I can incorporate those into the fortunes in a different way, right? Or into the cookies in a different way. Like maybe put it as part of the wrapper instead. And that would be fun. Now, as for the size of these bath bombs, they are about, they're somewhere in between my kids bombs that I can put little toys like Shopkins and Pokemon and whatnot in and my bigger bombs that, well, can fit bigger things in it, but we really only do that for the Harry Potter. Oh, oh, okay. Now this is all making sense. Okay. So tomorrow, actually, I am doing a video about bath bomb molds, the spherical ones, the sizes, because you know how it's always, well, what's 50 mils and 60 and 70 and, you know, whatever. And what does that mean? You know, in a maker's perspective, how big does that actually, what does that mean? What is the, you know, size of it? What's the weight of it? And all of that. So tomorrow is actually a test business building day. And we're going to really talk about bath bomb molds and sizes. So there's that to help you with selecting what you would like in your bombs. But this one I would say is about, uh, I don't know, like five ounces. Yeah, that makes sense. Each of these bombs are about five ounces and doesn't really leave a lot of room to put anything inside is the point that I was getting to with all of it, that there isn't a lot of room inside of there to put like a charm, which is kind of unfortunate because it's a fortune cookie. So you kind of want to give something inside because that's what we're used to in a fortune cookie. There's something inside. So I don't really know. You could put very small charms like those little things that people clip onto their Crocs. I think you could get that in there very easily. Those things are expensive as shit though. So I don't know that that's really cost effective or little charms for a necklace or a bracelet that would work too. And I think that's kind of all that would work. I don't see a Shopkins or an LOL or a Pokemon fitting into these fortune cookies very well at all. But also if there's a Pokemon in a fortune cookie bath bomb, it just gets very confusing. That's, we're, we're definitely mixing genres there and that's weird. But I mean, so far so good as far as the molding is concerned with these, you can bust out some bombs pretty quickly. And as you can see, I'm being pretty mean to this mold and haven't had any problems with it at all. So durability is there for sure. And that's great. I'm just not just kind of bummed that they're not just a little bit bigger so I could get something in it, but that's okay. This is a really good size for a bath bomb, for a bath for either a child or an adult, either way. It's just, it's a weird shape. So therefore it's kind of hard to get something in the middle anyway, whatever. It's all a thing. I am now curious though. This is the first time that I've ever played with any of these sort of compression type mold thingies. And I wonder how far we can push the boundaries of them. Like, can we put like gems or bath melts or something inside the mold? And so it's just kind of hanging out on the outside of the bomb, like for my bath melts that we do quite often or like geode soaps and or bath bombs and stuff. I don't know. I, I will continue playing with this because I'm super duper interested, but this is a, uh, as far as 
usability. This is very easy and none of these bath bombs are breaking apart as I'm continuing to bang on the counter and do all the things. So that's good. That means that they're well compressed. You're definitely getting your workout though with all of that for sure. Look how vascular my arms are at the end of this, like hulking out. But yeah, no, it's, I, I think it's, I mean, I guess I'm going to reserve my judgment as to whether or not it's worth the money until after these have dried and we see, because this particular mold costs 14 bucks and I'm like, damn, that's, I don't really pay much attention to what costs what in the soaping world these days, but I was big shooketh. Wow. That's, that's a price. But really, that's the only reason I think that is because I totally make my... Oh, this is a terrible idea. What are you doing? Right next to the bath bombs? I did that? Wow. All right. I mean, it looks good. It's galaxy. It's foamy and and fizzy. And... Whew. I was... That's a thing. Like, why would I do that right next to the bath bombs? What if it spilled over? Wow, I make bad choices sometimes. But you can see the water on the bottom. It totally is purple, so that works. That's what I was going for as far as the water color goes. But now we have to fix the color of the outside of these because, yeah, they're still pretty ugly. Okay, so that's what the water looked like after it stopped defoaming. And yes, it's very murky and purpley and beautiful. And that's amazing. So I love that. But still... These guys need to be a prettier color. Now, these set up overnight and they're really hard. I have none problems. I'm not concerned at all with shipping for these. They are not going to break in shipping. And so very sturdy. And I am just taking them and putting them in a bag that has a little bit of mica powder in it to coat the outside and make them, as I said, prettier because it's shaped like a fortune cookie, guys. Oh, that's better. Look, it's iridescent and beautiful and sure and you could use gold mica instead so it'll look more like a fortune cookie all the things now after this little batch I actually did go on and make you know like 20 more batches and that mold is still going strong no problems with it whatsoever I was never able to get the fortunes into them though unfortunately and I tested a bunch of different types of toys inside as well and that didn't work out either. So that's unfortunate, but they're still super cute. And as I said, I can do cute things with the with the little fortunes somewhere else on the packaging, you know, as part of the wrapper, whatever. And for these particular guys, I think the wrapping is still going to consist of my muslin, my fabric with a hair tie and just going to keep it like that because I really don't like using plastic just in general even though Mr. Soap and Clay continues to point out that I should use all of the plastic bags that I abandoned, you know, like five years ago, because, well, they're not being used, and so that's still a waste, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But that ended up actually looking very cute, and so the outside of them, super duper cute, and the inside will yield a really awesome purpley galaxy bath bomb color water thing, which is awesome, and... Yeah, no, 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 no fortune, unfortunately, but you know, that's still cool. It's cause for celebration. It's the end of uh, the Animal Crossing theme and uh, error 404, fortune not found. That is day 118, the end of the Animal Crossing series. Yay. I love that I got to sit down for a little bit while all that was going on for sure, because my back killing me, those fortune cookies, are amazing. The dark purple that's going to come from this greenish cookie is going to be such an epic bathwater for sure. But then rolling it in a mica to make it look more fancy because they have these galaxy fortune cookies that I got some really cool stuff from in the pocket version of Animal Crossing and I wanted to kind of mimic that. It's also going to be beautiful for sure. I love these. And I also love that because these are done, that means we can release the entire Animal Crossing line. Yeah, so if you are interested in getting any of the Animal Crossing soaps, you can find them at soapandclay.com. And every order that contains an Animal Crossing soap ships with one of these cool fortune cookies for free. But you can also, you know, buy them on your own if you're not into soaps, which is like 
Don't know why you would be following my channel if you don't like soap. But anyway, yes, I am uh, very glad that you guys joined me for this crazy Animal Crossings theme thing. It's been so much fun. So thank you for being Sudzers and being subscribed and being part of my tribe. I really appreciate that. For those of you who are not Sudzers and subscribed and part of my tribe, I could appreciate you too. I appreciate you regardless. Calm down. But yeah, for sure, I appreciate everyone for having joined me for another round of 365 Days of Soap. I'm out of here for today. I will be back tomorrow for another round of not Animal Crossing, but still equally enjoyable, soapy fun. Bye.